Hello everyone, my name is Jazz Frog, and in this video I want to talk about the one of the greatest things that the game has to offer, and that is the evolution of the bosses. Uh, th this is game made by Team Ninja, so Team Ninja is not a rookie or newbie when it comes to making design of the bosses because they are really good when it comes to combat and the design of the bosses for even from the Ninja Gaiden, not from the Neo. They evolve on making great bosses. I do believe it starts from Ninja Gaiden and all of those kind of evolve every game they has to offer. Now, I want to talk about that. In this game, is for me, this is really perfect. And I can only compare it my experience from Neo 2 because that's one of the other games that I've been most played with this kind of genre from Team Ninja developers. Uh, the thing is, in the Neo 2, the bosses, they, they, they did evolve from the dream of the whatever difficulty it is. But the thing is that every, difficult, every dream of difficulty there is, they only change the pattern of the unblockable, which is kind of good, I guess, so that a player would be more alert when it comes to fighting a bosses on the different di different difficulty. But on the underworld, uh, they're pretty much the same. If they added a new ability, I think it's just one or kind of unnoticeable. But in this game, especially on the DLC, the all bosses really have a new combo. They may just add a few, uh, few of their previous attacks, but I tell you, there are uh, one or two new combos that are really new ones. Especially for the second DLC that they have done on the Gilgamesh Rift. Uh, the best bosses they added is the four Chaos Fiend. Uh, before the four Chaos Fiend, they are the normal fiends, right? Which is pretty good. Tiamat, Tiamat is the balance one. He doesn't have an unblockable. Her, his, the move set are not so fast and strong. And the gimmick of Tiamat is that uh, he uses the regenerate, and for you to beat him, is you need to uh, other, rather than you one shot the break damage, or if you always hit the neck, where it deals a great amount of break damage. Uh, Lich, Lich is the magician of the game. Uh, Lich is the magician of all the bosses. Uh, he summons uh, two skeletons, and when you kill two skeletons, uh, he becomes way more powerful. And his magics are really, really great if you're fighting him the first time. Next is he has this Doom, where you, if the accumul accumulation is 100% on you, your breakage only has maximum of 20 or 25%. I'm not sure the uh, right math on it, but a great amount of break damage. I, a great decrease amount of your break damage is a big dealer of this game especially when you are in a break gauge all of your buff buffs will be gone and you will take a great amount of damage when you are on the break state uh, next is kraken kraken is the tankiest one i think yeah for me he's tankiest one because on the second phase he armored up with the water but even he has uh, more on physical defense uh, leech has a weakness when you attack his arm and especially his head he gets stagger state and last one is the marilith marilith is the most squeeze squishiest uh, the most uh, weak defensive of all the four fiends but the thing is uh, marilith has the most break damage because marilith is a break uh, agility stat uh, based boss and also his moves he is the fastest of all he is the fastest of all which is i really really love especially when you use the slow weapon like axe great sword uh, it will be more challenging to you for, for you to fight and the thing is uh, all of these boss are balances for me because they have all their weaknesses even though if you think that they are so fast which is really really good there are still a lot of weaknesses for you to explore uh yeah about the chaos fiends all of those i, I have said every fiends those are like 10 times way better uh, I remember when the first time I saw a fight Chaos Leech, no wait, sorry, Chaos Tiamat, he has now an unblockable hand, he's a lot of spells right now and it doesn't regenerate health but it removes your magic, uh, there's a buff, I mean the dispel removes your buff, everything. And next it would be Maradith, of course, Maradith becomes way more faster and way more combo. It's like he has an out and hit combos, which is really pretty insane. Lich, yeah, Lich becomes, becomes way more teleport, more faster, and he's actually have a more grab 
No, I mean it's the same grab, but it's way faster than the before. Kraken is now like a ninja. <laughs> he can teleport and jumps everything, everywhere on the map, which is pretty crazy. That's the thing that I really like about the Chaos Fiends. And there's one particular boss that I want to talk about, which is the Warrior Flight. A lot of people when the a lot of people said that Warrior Flight is not a good boss when it's released. For me, it's actually really fine, which is uh, it is a balance. A fight but on the last one oh my god they really did well especially when the music comes hit and that's part it's it's actually great that they made it uh, evolve on the last part of the DLC which is part of the story of the game especially when you last a second when you see the second phase of the warrior flight the second phase is like from the DCG which is amazing for me because I really love the DCG game so and about other bosses I think uh, BK BK became a pirate, which is became I know I mean he's a pirate, but it was at the guns were added were really great for him because pirate uses guns, and he has a great amount of decent of uh, decent attacks, and for the other bosses like the the elemental core that there's nothing so much the Griffin, they're kind of like the small. Uh, like a mini boss. I mean, it's still a boss, but kind of represents as a mini boss. Other than that, uh, all of the bosses really live well. Even Darkness of Manifest. Uh, the Darkness of Mani Darkness Manifest has, has a great amount of combos. Even though after the DLC, he's kind of like a not good boss compared to other ones. I do understand because, of course, the best last boss is Garland as well. So that's about it. I just want to talk about the evolution of bosses. This is not a review or guide. I just want to express my feelings with how much I really love about this boss in this game. Where the game is really uh, focused on. Uh, not so much on the minions because the minions in this game are normal enemies. I mean they are fine I guess. Some have mechanics like the uh, the Kraken, the mini Kraken, the octopus where it grabs you and removes your buff and the big guy which is basically the Magara now top of the Neo 2 which is really great but there are two uh, uh, there are not, not too much amount of enemies on the on the normal enemies so that's about it uh, thank you for watching and have a nice day